I thought I had it figured out. Believed in us. We were meant to be. Hey everyone, welcome back. The third generation Incarnons are here. These ones are a little bit different. They've been inserted into week three of the Steel Path circuit rotations, bumping everything else down one week for a now seven week rotation. Uniquely, these five new Incarnons, Boar, Anku, Gorgon, Gamacore, and Angstrom, can be purchased during this week only from Cavalero and the Chrysalis. Once this week ends, they will no longer be buyable. Once this week three returns, the shop returns again. These are the only Incarnons that can be bought with Platinum at 120 apiece. They also come with the required adapter materials to put on your weapon. You still need your actual weapons to put them on though. Of course, you can also just farm these new Incarnons and you are still limited to picking two a week if you do this. Whereas, you can buy all five from the shop now. You can also buy them once only, so if the adapter somehow disappears, or you want more, you'll have to farm it the old-fashioned way. Of course, if you choose to farm them, you have to have access to Duviri. They can only be obtained on the Steel Path circuit, from Tier 5 and Tier 10 rewards when you pick them at the start of a new week. If you can't access this, then you have to complete normal circuit at least one round, and also fully complete one run of Lone Storing Kill the Oral Worm. Then, Provided you have Steel Path, the new circuit should unlock. Do remember that you still have to farm resources to use the adapter on your weapon. Alright, Boar Prime, or well, Born Carnon, but I don't know why you would use it on the non-prime. Honestly, this is the standout one from this week. The rest range from subpar to above average. In fact, some are even bugged, notably the Gamma Core and Carnon, but we'll discuss that in its own video. Born Carnon is definitely the one to pick this week, and of course, use it on the prime. As a small update, Gun and Carnon adapters now also describe what the Incarnon mode will do in the second paragraph. It's just a small blurb, and you don't get any stats until you attach it. Boar's Incarnon form is a bit weird. It basically turns it into a primary Vermisplicer, or if you know better, an Occucore is a primary. The beams can split into three at the source and individually chain enemies. Sometimes, they'll all hit the same target. Other times, for some reason, you'll see them swerve around the enemy directly in front of you to hit the ones in the back. It's a bit weird, but that's just the way it is. The tentacle gun, essentially. It also becomes a beam, which is very important for build setups I'll explain later. And in Incarnon perks? Well, headshotting charges the meter as expected and then alt fire to activate your Incarnon mode. It will give ammo equal to percent of the bar filled. You cannot increase the Incarnon ammo via ammo max or magazine mods. Alt firing again will end in Incarnon mode early and expend the entire bar. Evo 2 is a bit weird. This weapon has 320 damage by default on 8 multi-shot, or 40 damage per pellet. The plus 16 damage applies to each pellet, or plus 128 damage overall to 448. What's important is that this 16 bonus damage is ignored by Galvanize Savvy. This devalues Guncio. The same holds true for Reified Bane, and if you have a channeled ability, you should always pick Fortress Salvo because Boar's normal mode is pretty legit by itself, and the built-in punch through will let you charge the Incarnon meter faster if you don't want to use the normal mode. Otherwise, well, take Reified Bane. The Boar has decently good accuracy and excessively high damage, so there isn't really a reason to take plus accuracy. Increasing ammo max will not fix ammo economy problems as that's what ammo mutation is for. Therefore, Merc Chamber is also useless. Ready Retaliation also only activates on an empty mag, and sometimes even on an empty mag, it doesn't work, about 10% of the time. There is no perfect perk for this tree, so take whatever you want. The reload buff will not affect the transformation animation. For the fourth perk, do keep in mind the status chance gets split up per pellet on a normal mode. This 12% is actually 1.5% bonus per pellet. Same for Survivor's Edge, only giving 1.2% status to each pellet, and this makes it garbage for shotgun mode. For B mode, the weapon has base 20% crit and 24% status. 
you gain a lot more damage by taking equal or more crit in buffs. The first 100% crit chance, as we know, is extremely important, more so than anything above 100, because before that, you don't even benefit from your crit damage if you don't crit. Whereas status chance scales linearly, therefore, since survivors only give 6% status and 10% crit, and crit is more valuable, we take crit parallel. Not only does this double our crit from 20 to 40, but we also get a massive plus 0.5 times crit multiplier buff. That crit damage stat buff actually applies before mods, so we now have guaranteed crits that hit even harder, and we're still able to apply some status. We're starting with a corrosive build today since the math is more simple. This is a standard raw corrosive DPS crit build. Most importantly, we have Seeking Force slotted on. This is the flex slot. If you're not using Fortress Salvo for the built-in punch through, then consider if you intend to actually use the normal mode of this weapon to DPS. If yes, then take Seeking Force so that you can kill crowds. If no, then this becomes flex for shotgun barrage plus fire rate. Primed Bane is still useful here, but keep in mind this is a raw damage build and thus only single dips for 1.55 times more damage. Merciless or Deadhead up to you. Deadhead stacks last way longer but require headshot kills to apply. This shouldn't be a big issue since boar hits like a truck. The Incarnon mode though likes to chain through center mass and thus is very difficult to get headshots with. If you want to go in Karnon B mode, I would suggest taking Merciless. Galvanized Savvy works amazingly well on the normal mode because Boar has many pellets, decent status, and innate IPS. You will proc 4 different statuses for plus 320% base damage, as well as extra status for token corrosive procs. Consider ammo mutation in the Exclus if it's an issue. The viral build gets a lot more complicated. You're gonna have to trust me on this one. We tested both viral heat and viral hunter munitions since the weapon surpasses 100% crit chance. Normal mode is very obviously better on viral slash than heat because Humumu relies on crits. At 100% plus, we always have 30% chance of slashing. Heat is only 33.8% status chance, multiplied by heat weight, which is very obviously not 100% and thus would bring us below the 30% odds of Slash. Also, Slash bypasses armor whereas heat doesn't. On the beam mode, things are a bit different. Unfortunately, Prime T to charge does not exist for primaries. Incendiary Coat only boosts us to 61.3% heat weight. Even with 72% status, we still only proc heat 44.4% of the time we shoot. And again, it has to deal with armor, where a slash does not, despite only 30% proc chance. Galvanized Savvy is still worth slotting due to IPS and Viral present on normal mode. On B mode, we only have Viral, Heat, and Slash, but that's still 240% base damage for 100 munitions setup, surpassing Primed Point Blank and bonus status for Viral stacking. Finally, the important bit. If you have Shotgun Vendetta, use it here. This is a rare case of a shotgun acting as a beam, such as Convectrix. Multi-shot double dips on beams for dot damage. Unlike the Corrosive Ron DPS setup earlier, this is a slash dot build. Shotgun Vendetta grants plus 180% multi-shot. We have plus 230% from Galvanized Multi-Shot, boosting us to 3.3 bullets. Vendetta buffs us up to 5.1, which is... 5.1 divided by 3.3, or 1.545 times damage increase. But as I said, multi-shot double dips, so we square this. Vendetta thus instead does 1.545 squared, or 2.39 times more damage. Why does this matter? Merciless grants plus 360% base damage. Savvy already gives 240% on B mode. Going from 340 to 700 is only a 2.06 times damage increase. Even if you use Deadhead, this increases it to 2.68 times damage scaling, which is higher, but only on headshots. And remember, Boren Karnon does not like chaining to heads. For Viral Hunter Munitions Boar and Karnon mode, Vendetta is by far the best for convenience. Also, Vendetta only requires a single kill, once every 15 seconds within 5 meters of you, whereas Merciless requires a kill every 4 seconds and has 12 stacks, and Deadhead requires headshot kills specifically, which don't work as well with Slash DPS and requires 3 stacks, lasting 24 seconds each. 
Also, Vendetta gives 75% reload speed, whereas Merciless only gives 30%. The Viral Slash or Heat build is specifically focused around the Incarnon mode Beam DPS. If you want to use Viral Slash Boar, but only on normal mode, then Punch Through is extremely important. If you cannot activate Fortress Salvo, then you will have to give up Galvanize Savvy or outsource Viral to Nourish. Do not use Shotgun Vendetta if you're only using normal mode of Viral Hunter Munitions, as it is weaker than Merciless for this. Use anti-recoil excellence to taste if it really bothers you. Otherwise, cheers! If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave a like or better yet subscribe, let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed, I'm trying my best to get you new information out always as soon as possible, like I've been doing with Duviri. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis, you won't miss out on any of that do you? That'll be it for this video, thank you all for watching and see you all next time!